the only other gay is like your ex. <laughs> your your ex is ex. You start dating your, your ex, ex is, is ex. ex, and you're like, I, I I I need to move. Every time you break up, you just got to move somewhere else because you dated everyone. Welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators in a space where we share our stories on all things queer related. Um, hey, if you guys are new listening to this, hit that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts and give us a follow on Spotify. We have an awesome TikTok uh, creator on today. Um, she's a social media marketing whiz. She has a ridiculously cute dog. And I want to share with you guys our guest. Uh, you can find her at Haley Faulkner on TikTok and Instagram. Please welcome Haley Faulkner. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so glad I could get you on. I have been watching your videos since the beginning of time, the beginning of my time on TikTok. You got <laughs> on it for a hot second. You got on it before yeah. quarantine, which is I did. Which is probably because you're in social media, social media marketing. So you have to have the know abouts about all things social. Yeah, I remember downloading it. It was October of last year. And I downloaded it because I'm in marketing and it was showing signs of taking off. So I was like, I feel like I should download this and just kind of understand it and just see what it's all about. But I wasn't planning on actually posting anything on my personal account. Uh, but after having it for a couple of days, I just kind of threw a video on that I had on my Instagram yeah. story. I was like, I already have it. I might as well just throw it on TikTok and just see what happens. And it started to get views, which I thought was strange because I had no followers. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do another video. And then my third video hit a million views. Holy and shit. Yeah. So that, after that, I decided, okay, I'll start posting a little bit more consistently. And a year later, I'm still making content. And it's, it's been awesome. It's got to meet a whole bunch of people. And yeah, it's been a journey. That's amazing. Yeah. Your style of videos, you know, you do the trending videos, which is, you know, obviously it's trending and the songs are trending and things like that, but you do a lot of video skits as well, which I love because it's so original and unique. Um, not that trending content can't be unique. You can put your own spin on it and, and make it really relatable and things like that. I mean, I do trending content, but I love those style videos, like the 50 shades of gray video. <laughs> the you know can't figure out where to fucking eat like it, yeah. in a reality kind of thing and it's it's a mockumentary type of thing i yeah. mean it's it's so fucking funny and so when i saw those i was like she has to be in video production like she definitely <laughs> knows like not advanced level editing but more than basic level editing like more editing than me than i could do um you know got those jump cuts in there but uh yeah, like that That stuff was super, super hilarious. Like, where did you kind of get those those original ideas from? You know, I come up with ideas. I feel like it, the process is so different sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll have an idea, and then I'll try to um, – I write them down like a little notes app on my phone. And then I'll go on TikTok, just watch a bunch, bunch of TikToks just to find sounds. And yep. then it's just like a puzzle game trying to connect the idea to the sound. And sometimes in that process, like a skit idea will come into my head and then I'll just kind of play off that and it'll grow from there. I get that. Sometimes if I hear something, then it'll give me an idea, but then other times I'll have an idea and, I'm, and I have to try to find sound. I most yeah. of the time do a sound. Like if I see a sound and I will have an idea and I'll do that, or if I see a type of video, like a certain type, mm -hmm. maybe there's a trending thing with it like if I have a framework for it, like an outline, then I can kind of adjust it and do my own thing. And that's kind yeah. of how I do my stuff. But everyone's process is so different, which is, I think is super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like normally I have the idea first and then I just try to find a sound that would work well with that. But sometimes the sound comes first, mm -hmm. like something about it will trigger something and I'm yeah. like, oh, that would be fun. But yeah, I feel like I have the most fun making the skits. You just get way into it and I feel more creative making them, but because they're not trending sounds, they don't always get as many views. And that's the thing I've seen too. Like I've definitely, like I have original content and a lot of the stuff was just off the cuff. Like mm -hmm. the first one that went viral for me and it wasn't like super viral, not my, like my other ones, but like it, it hit a hundred K and that was like the first yeah. week or two that I was posting. And it was like, I was just walking around in my, my parents' neighborhood 
and everyone was getting their roofs done during quarantine. And I saw someone on the roof and obviously, you know, below her mouth, there's a character, if you've seen it, who is a roofer. And so I, people were on the roof. And so I was like, is anybody Dallas? Like asking for a friend. And I, (laughs) you know, didn't spend that much time on it. Not like the other ones that I was like pouring so much energy into and it wasn't getting anything. I was like, oh, this is funny. And I did that. And I was like, ha ha ha, asking for a friend and literally blew up completely. Like it was like a hundred K, you know, when it used to like super blow up really fast and didn't have delayed explosions, like back Mm -hmm. in, I don't know, April. And I was like, oh my God, like (laughs) I'm famous. Ah." Like (laughs) that's, that's kind of like an interesting and kind of cool thing about TikTok. It's almost like probably good to try a little bit less. I feel like that's sort of Mm -hmm. what people like to see on TikTok are those more off the cuff, not super highly edited videos, which I think is cool because, you know, it means anyone can make viral content. I think you're right. And it's very raw. TikTok is the most raw form of, you know, video creation that we've seen since Vine, to be quite honest. And nobody thought they could, you know, Vine could be matched, but this did. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it did start as more music oriented and dance, but then it, you know, slowly when it be, you know, transitioned from musically to TikTok, it became very Vine like, but you could make longer ones. And it it could be as long as a minute and as little as, you know, I, I have videos as little as six seconds that are viral. So like around that vine type of thing, but yeah, I've, I've been waiting for a resurgence because I never got on the vine kick. I was in college. It was like my senior year that it started taking off. And then my freshman year of college, I was like obsessed with it, but I wasn't creating, I was just consuming and I didn't start creating content and doing the, that kind of stuff until after college. And the organic reach of TikTok is like no other. And I, you, I mean, I'm sure you know this because you're in social media marketing, but like the Discover page and YouTube's, you know, own version of the Discover page is way too saturated. You know, it's like almost impossible to get on their pages and it's harder to grow. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, with TikTok, every video gets on the for you. It just it's a matter of how, what your percentage, you know, it sees, but everyone at least gets on the for you page every single time, yeah. at least has a chance. Right. <clears throat> yeah. TikTok is, is definitely, I haven't seen a platform like that in a, in a while where you can literally have, you can, you can go from like zero followers. You can have zero followers, but your video can have massive reach. Cause like you said, everyone has a chance to get on that for you page. Mm-hmm. And that just can't happen with things like Instagram or YouTube, you kind of already need that, that following base. Yeah. You need to use. build it on t- these platforms like TikTok, and then you need to cross promote mm-hmm. on right. Instagram and then onto YouTube, create a podcast. Like you need to have yeah. a base where it, you have the most organic reach first. But right. yeah, I, I think it's crazy. Um, what do you think about the TikTok creator fund. Now I know that you might be a part of the marketplace because you're over hundred K, but do you have any thoughts on the creator fund? Cause it's super new and I've heard a lot of like different things about it. I'm not personally involved in that right now, but I think it could be a good thing. It could encourage, because especially if you're a top creator, if you have millions and millions of followers, a lot of them spend hours and hours a yeah. week making content. So I think TikTok acknowledging that and compensating them a little bit for that, I think is a good thing. Yeah. And very interested to see how that plays out because it is still so new. True. The marketplace, I don't know much about because I, I need to get to like 100K to, to get on it. But the creator fund mm-hmm. is something that I anyone who has at least 10K, I don't remember what it was, but um, and I heard a lot of different things about it because it, it does pay you, but I also heard that it suppresses your views because it basically is going to pay you out for two cents per thousand views and then it will suppress your views so that they can't pay you out as much. And so then you're not building a following and you're not making that much money um, and you're not getting the reach. And so I don't really see maybe the marketplace is a lot better once you hit hundred K, but for this creator fund, I was, I literally got out of it before I was even accepted. Cause I was like, that fucking sucks. Yeah. Like I can't promote this, my podcast and grow my following and like anything else that I want to do with, with yeah. this and, and helping the community and, and doing something 
you know, building a queer business or anything like that, if, you know, that's happening, it just doesn't seem like it's an advantageous thing, mm -hmm. but maybe the marketplace is better. Like maybe once you, I need another 25 K and I'll be able to do it, but yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people noticed their views go down just all across TikTok when they release that, because I think they're thinking they only want a few people up there that they have to pay, you know? Right. So they want to keep that more limited, I feel like now. So it has become harder to grow on TikTok ever since they announced that. Um, so that is the, the downside. But like you said, definitely you can make more money off social media through other sources than just the TikTok oh, creator sure. fund. So. For sure, for sure. Where, if, if you don't mind me asking this, but um, what company do you work for with social media marketing? Um, it's a social media marketing agency. Okay. Um, it's called Syzygy Social. Cool. And yeah, we work primarily with startups. Okay, cool. I didn't know if like you worked media with influencers <laughs> or if you did mainly like businesses that are looking for social media, uh, like marketing campaigns and, and running like Facebook ads, doing mm -hmm. like pages, stuff like that. Yeah, we do. It's all social media and we focus mainly on organic okay. traffic, which is kind of tricky to do, especially on Instagram right now. But that's what we specialize in. Our clients are kind of all over the place. We have, yeah. you know, an app for plant parents. So it's like plant care tips. And, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so they're all lesbians, right? Uh, yeah, seriously. Like I feel very comfortable um, working on that account. And <laughs> um, yeah, like we like have I got it. I have succulent Jenny and this is yes. Macy and this exactly. is Jennifer. And we <laughs> we're here. <laughs> well, hey, no, the app has a name generator for your plants <laughs> like they definitely like play up the whole plant parent like this is your your plant child and you're gonna name it and take care of it and it's gonna oh be awesome <laughs> that's amazing i know so many people who would love this app yeah all my friends it's it's called stored so oh, i need stored. this app because i'm terrible yeah. at taking care of plants i just got a new place a week and a half ago and uh I want to get plants, but I kill everything. I had a fern. I killed it yeah. in like four months. I was sad about it. It's fine. I got over it. But Hey, but you got, you got a great light source behind you right there. <sighs> I got nice That's windows. great for plants. Yeah. Well, you, oh, yeah. the app, you can scan your apartment or your room, and it will tell you. It'll break your room up into zones, what? and it will give plant recommendations and plant placement tips. See, these are the plants that would thrive the best in this zone. Oh my God, I need that. App. You're selling yeah. me now. You're selling me <laughs> on this app because I literally had all these questions. I was like, I mean, I know they need sunlight, but like how much do they need? You know, like right. do I need to put it on a windowsill or like, can I, can I put it somewhere else? Like and legit, do I don't want to water it too much? I don't want to yeah. water it not enough. They can't tell me, they can't cry, you know? It'll, you can plug in the plant you have. It'll give you watering reminders. And if it starts dying, there's a plant doctor you can <laughs> consult with. <laughs> you know, it's like my child is dying and it will, it'll help you bring it back to life. <laughs> that is a TikTok video. That's a yeah. TikTok video. You're like, yeah. doctor, he's dying. And then you could literally do that. That's a fucking, that's, that's yeah. right. If you it's, literally wanted to like reach out to them, just you already work with them and like get paid mm -hmm. to like make an ad and do that. Yeah. Hell, I'd fucking do it. If you don't do it, I'll yeah. do it. Be like, listen, this is, you know, in line with my, with my audience and <laughs> they respond well. There's yeah. It, it really would though, because if I saw that, I'd be like, oh my God, I need, <laughs> and I don't do that with a lot of, with a lot of that stuff, I'd say. Yeah with bit like with ads and things like that but like mm -hmm. something that would really hit home but that's one thing i've never really I've never been a plant parent but i'm curious about it it does sound interesting i've just <laughs> always been like i feel like i will definitely kill my plants yeah but me too. i did one and i got scared and now i'm about to get a kitty and so i'm like oh, well yeah. then like plants and kitties and they eat the leaves <laughs> and like get in the fucking soil and i just like clean the floors and I got new shit and uh, I'm going to be such a, yeah. I'll be like, Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Then if you said you got the cat, you got the plants. What else do you need? I need a cottage core house. I, cottage I mean, core house. 
<laughs> this, house is, this house is close. It's not cottage core, but it's a 1918 yeah. style house. So I feel like it, okay. it breaks up there. Okay. Yeah. When In things the break, you can go to Home Depot and get tools and I have an Ace Hardware and, that's uh, 0.4 yep. miles away. I can walk to it. That works. That's so funny. Those are TikToks right there. Literally. Fixing up, we're, fixing up your 1918 home. I know. I mean, it's newly renovated, so I don't technically have to fix anything. I literally have to break shit to fix it, and I don't think I'd want to. Do it for the TikTok. <laughs> my landlord. My God, I have to do this. I have to. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, this is wrong breaking you. your shit, but I'm going to fix your shit. So yes, just... trust me. Oh my God. This is all planned out. Terrible. I have made some videos as I'm getting everything together, like, you know, about the new place and stuff like that but I haven't made it like gay yet so I need to like <laughs> I need to make something gay and and I you gave me an idea to like make it gay so we'll figure that out at yeah. some point get some, um, get some flags yes 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 <laughs> so you live in Nashville right yes okay that's what I saw in a lot of stuff how is it I wouldn't consider it like south south but it mm -hmm. is technically the south but it's not that far from the Midwest, because I live in Cincinnati. Yeah, you're like six hours or so. Yeah, it's not too bad. How, how is it like being queer living in the South? Yeah, I actually get that question a lot. Um, you know, Nashville is actually very progressive and accepting. Um, I've been out here for about eight years now, and I've never really had any issues with being gay in Nashville. But I will say, like, we are in the South and right in the Bible Belt. So I don't think I'd feel super comfortable living anywhere else in Tennessee, but Nashville, I think it's because the music industry, it, it brings a lot of people in from like LA and New York. So I think that helps make it a yeah. more accepting and open environment as opposed to maybe other places in the South. I know Atlanta is a similar way. I know some people who are gay in Atlanta and they say it's, it's great down there. Again, because they have a pretty big entertainment industry that just bring, attracts people from all over the place. I feel like it's funny, like, whenever people say, like what you just said, that, you know, there's progressive places in the South. It's always because people are coming to the South. People yeah. who are born in the South. Like, they're all yep. transplants that come in and make yep. it progressive. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm a transplant. I was born and raised in D.C., Oh my yeah. gosh, one of the most pro progressive places, most, you know, yeah. political places. Yeah, yeah, and that was a concern, like, co going from D.C. to Nashville. I was like, oh my gosh, like, how's that going to go? But I found it to be great. I mean, the gay scene here, we have a gay scene. Like, we have a few gay bars, gay hangout spots, but it's not massive. But I actually kind of like that because it's, you know, it's a good medium-sized gay scene. <laughs> I don't want a big gay scene. Yeah. I don't want like LA, ugh, San yeah. Diego, bleh. New York. Yeah. Oh my God. I want a little gay. Scene. I want not a, a little, little gay scene, but it's just, just right. Little to medium. You don't want it so small to where it's like, you know, the only other gay is like your ex. <laughs> your, your ex is ex. You start dating your, and your ex, ex is, is ex. And you're like, I, I, I need to move. <laughs> Every time you break up, you just got to move somewhere else because you dated everyone. <laughs> oh my God, that sounds awful. Yeah, yep. small, x on the small, small gay yeah. areas. But like, yeah, I feel like Cincinnati is about, I would say medium size. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a small city though. It's obviously smaller than like Nashville. Um, mm -hmm. But it has a few gay bars and like gay adjacent. I call them gay adjacent bars because there's a lot of gay people around, but it doesn't technically, it's not technically a gay bar, but it's like always has pride flags, always right. very pro everything and not just during June. Advocates. Yeah. They're not just getting on the bandwagon to get people in in June. I feel like I saw one of your videos when you were, when it's like slapping on uh, a pride flag on your business during that time, which is so yeah. true. It's so true. Like just for that one month, there'll be rainbows everywhere. Then they'll just yeah. take them down. Like it's a holiday. Like, oh, yeah. it's a holiday. We're just going to put it up. But I admire the, the places that keep them up all year. Exactly. Because those are the real places that actually give a shit. It isn't just for capitalistic gain. Exactly. But I think it's funny because people were trying to figure out, like, I think businesses were trying to figure out, like, do we put Black Lives Matter up? Do we put Pride up? Can we put <laughs> both up? Or is it, like, too much? That's it's right, just too much right. to advocate for both. <laughs> right at the same time. <laughs> yeah. 
I saw some TikToks about that. Like, this is just like stressing out how to handle that. We can't overwhelm the consumer with too much progressiveness. We can yeah. only pick one, okay? Yeah. Maybe we'll pick the pride one because it has all, it has people of color included. Maybe we'll just, yeah. I, I'm just trying to think of what they're thinking of. They're like, oh, okay, right. this is more inclusive because it has everyone. Right. <laughs> Black no, Lives those Matter are, those are just, the conversations that, that yeah. go on. God, fucking crazy. <laughs> But that's nice that gay scene is, is nice there. I never, I've never really been, I've been to Nashville a few times, but just in your normal touristy areas, I never went there like going to gay bars or anything like that. But yeah. I might, I might now. You should, because you probably were on Broadway. Yeah. And I don't recommend that too much. Mm -mm, I didn't like it. It's, it's, it's cringy really that that's when people visit, that's usually their only experience in Nashville and I'm like mm, that's really it gets so much better than that <laughs> I feel like I'm triggered for so many reasons like last time I was in Nashville was last March I don't know 2019 and like it's just like ugh, like a bunch of straight cis men in boots yep. with fucking balls hanging from their big ass trucks that they don't need that yep. they probably can't afford they're just trying to like compensate for having a small dick <laughs> and like yeah. it's just like ugh, like the the farmhouse girls who are like just way too into fall, but not for the right reasons. And yeah. like, I, I it, ugh, like, I can't, I can't yeah, you, fathom it. It's too much heterosexuality for me. Yeah. Broadway is, yeah, definitely that vibe. I avoid it as much as I can. <laughs> I go to Broadway maybe once a year and I get roped into it and it's, I regret it every time. Yeah, I mean, I went with friends and like it, it was fun. I just didn't really care to like go out to the bars and like I'm not a huge country music fan. I'm a big yeah. like old country, like Johnny Cash, like yeah. John Denver, like those kind of things. But like new country, poppy country, not a big fan right. in general. And I came from a small town, a country school, you know, <laughs> like an hour outside of Cincinnati. And so like it's just like flashbacks from like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is just not fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. You got to go out to like cross the bridge, go to East Nashville, way more, way more chill. I get it. Did you go to um, Nashville? Why did you go out there? Was it for work? No, um, I had just turned 18 and my family all decided to come down to Nashville. They liked DC, but they were kind of wanting something a little slower paced and they picked Nashville and I had just turned 18, but I was like, okay guys you can't leave me up here in DC by myself so I <laughs> followed them down here I tried to move away a couple times but I just <laughs> kept coming back so now I'm just accepted it I'm like fine I live in Nashville now that's fine <laughs> Nashville's <laughs> they roped you in they roped yeah, you in like, with all those goodies you lassoed me in right <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so when did you end up coming out like was it before you moved to Nashville was it after you moved to Nashville I would say a couple months before we moved down here. I saw mom, you had long hair in some of your videos and mm -hmm. you, you, you were really feminine presenting. So I was like, interesting. Yeah. So about eight years ago, a couple months before moving down here, my mom finds out that I'm gay. And so she knows a few of my family fem members know, but I didn't come out to everyone else until, until I got my first girlfriend. So about six months after living here in Nashville. Okay. I kind of came out in phases. <laughs> oh yeah, I did the same thing. But I didn't wait to have a girlfriend. I was like on the opposite where I was like, cause I came from a small town. So I was like, I wanna make sure that my family and friends know so that if it gets out, they're not like kind of dumbfounded. Like we had no idea and like embarrassed or like disappointed that I couldn't right. come to them. And I like basically forced myself to do it so that I could like start dating. <laughs> yeah. I think I was just like, still felt weird and, and uncomfortable to have that conversation with everyone else. Yeah. But once I got into a relationship, I was like, you know, it's time. <laughs> yeah. Because like, I definitely didn't want to like hide that from people once I was in a relationship, especially. Me too. That's the one thing that, and that's why I like forced myself to come out was because I didn't want to put someone else through that if they were right. already out. I never wanted to put that burden onto someone else and have them go through being out and however long they've been out and then have to go back in the closet. Like that would have made me feel immense guilt, even if they were yeah. okay with it. I just wasn't okay with it. So I was like, I need to yeah. just 
rip the bandaid off and do it, you know, so, but sometimes like a relationship will give you more confidence to come out just because of mm -hmm. having a first girlfriend or a first love and, and that whole thing can give you the confidence to do it as well. Everyone has a different path with that, but it was interesting. I mean, cause I, once I came out, it was like, I went on a few dates and then I started dating my first girlfriend. Like it happened a lot faster than I thought it was going to. And it, it really helped me through that. Cause even though I had already come out, I was still dealing with all of the trauma and all of the internalized homophobia. So, I mean, I, I definitely could have done it alone, but that's kind of how it kind of happened was that, you know, I, I had someone there, which was, which was nice. Crazy. Yeah. Stuff. I think I went on like I, the first girl I'd ever gone on a date with, I think we went on three dates and she was like, do you want to be my girlfriend? I'm like, okay. <gasps> Like the typical, <laughs> like move super quick story. <laughs> That's fucking That's, quick. That's yeah. three dates. Well, I was okay. Like, okay. How long were these dates? Were they like Just normal? Dates? Were they like six to eight hour dates? Right. Um, okay. Long on the longer side, but still just three dates. I would. But she was I, like, I, like you're the only other like lesbian I know. So okay, yeah, I'll be your girlfriend. <laughs> There's one <laughs> thing like, out here. Like it, How about you? <laughs> She was lovely. Like, <laughs> that's not the only reason, but. <laughs> no, I, I completely understand. Yeah. I think it is funny, though, because I feel like lesbians do move super fast. It's interesting because sometimes it, it is unhealthy and it's and it, it can be immature, obviously, to, to move too quickly. But I also think that because you have two women who are typically more verbal, because women are typically more verbal in general, so you get through a lot more. So your the time spent is like very quality and you have longer dates, which means yeah. if it's longer, you get to know someone more. So you're more ready to, to commit and do different things because the dates are longer and you talk so fucking much that you <laughs> know this person so fast. Yep. So like three normal dates would maybe take, it's like six hours, you know, but if you go on three dates that are six hours long, that's 18 hours. So that's like, you know, double the time. It's like you went on double the amount of dates. Not to mention all the phone calls that you do in between the dates because, yes. you know, the six-hour date wasn't long enough. Yes. Plus, club. Another club. <laughs> Another club. Another club. Another yes. club. <laughs> you got memes. <laughs> you got pictures of my cat. Yep. You have calls with me in between. Just checking yep. in. I'm just saying hi. I was just thinking about you. Can't wait. Yeah. Miss you Talk already. You in two hours. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That is definitely <laughs> queer woman culture right there. Yep. I made you I made you a mixtape. Well, not a mixtape. I made you a Spotify playlist. Yeah. Um, I sent you something in the mail. <laughs> like, just so many fucking things. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Are you thinking about me? Are you thinking? What are you thinking about? <laughs> right. Yeah. Or they haven't, like, thought of you in, in two hours. And you feel like, oh, my gosh, they, they must have lost interest. Yeah. They must have moved on already. It's like so bad. Constantly needed validation. <laughs> there was this TikTok and it was, it, it had someone say that, like when my partner doesn't pay attention to me yeah. for 10 minutes, it's like her in yeah. the rain. I forget what like <laughs> song it is, but like, and that's funny because like that didn't happen to me at first. And then somebody that I was um, talking to and it, it literally happened and it was funny because like we hadn't met yet. And, you know, we, you get into a, a, a groove, right? Of, you know, when someone normally texts back, when you normally call, mm -hmm. like you get into the schedule. So like, if something is off, you're like, right. oh my God, it's oh my fucking gosh. over. <laughs> it's over. She doesn't like me. She doesn't care yep. about me anymore. You know? And they're like, yes. hey, sorry. You know, I was at the grocery store. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It just all goes away. And then just repeats <laughs> again. It's, it's exhausting, really. It's, <laughs> it is fucking exhausting. It seriously yeah. is exhausting. I saw that you made a few videos about dating apps. What has your experience been with dating apps? Like good, bad, like frustrating, great, you met the love of your life. Like, how do you feel about them? Mixed feelings. I feel like most of it are people I'm not usually interested in. A lot of people just looking for casual things or you know just people you're not compatible with but there are a few gems in there I've been into relationships and I met both of them through a dating app and I think which dating app you're on really depends I know like certain dating apps I've had less luck on and then others have been more successful I feel that way too yeah. I feel like some mm -hmm. are more 
casual. People are just kind of maybe looking to just experiment, maybe mm -hmm. to just have flings, you know, just have sex, stuff like that. And some are more committal based because you have, you know, you only have a certain amount of time to respond. And there's other right. features that are just more, um, let you connect more on a deeper level, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a testament too. There's one app that I started using. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called Tammy. It's like specifically for gay people. I have used that a little bit. Yeah. 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 I literally started using it and I think that it's one of those that are just all around just a little bit higher quality. I feel like you get a little bit higher quality people. You can chat, like you can just make friends if you're looking for queer friends, um, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And that's something that I, you know, had really wanted to do is make queer friends. And then also you can find people and date people. And there's this feature that I love because lesbians like, have you know they love their long distance relationships but like you can match with people that aren't like right in your location if you don't want to you can like do it you can do it international you can do it anywhere you want which is freaking awesome yeah and i love how it's it's lgbtq focused i don't know it just makes it feel a little bit more tailored to you and the community which i feel like it attracts like you said just more quality people who are looking for more relationship type thing especially I feel like that's what a lot of queer women are looking for so an app made yeah. just for them seriously it's a good thing <laughs> what more what more could you want um right. and I like it too because you never know like I've gotten on other dating apps like almost catfished or like where you have a random dude pop up who like obviously put himself as a woman who's looking for a woman yeah. who's obviously a dude you have yeah. unicorn hunters you, you gotta dodge all of these you know things <laughs> And like, I feel like, like, as I've been on this app, like, you don't have to do that as much. And it also has a video chat option. So it makes it safer. So you're less likely to, to get catfish for real or to encounter right. people who aren't what they say they are, which I really like. So yeah, if you yeah. guys, listeners, if you're listening to this and haven't heard of Tammy, click the link below. I have a link that you guys can join today for free. Definitely my favorite app right now. It's a good one. It is, it is. Have you ever been catfished before though? Like for real? Have you ever been catfished? Have you ever like had anything like weird happen on on uh, on those other dating apps? I feel like I've definitely matched with catfish people, but I, it's Ooh. never gotten, it's never like gotten so far to where I show up on a date and it's clearly not the yeah. person in the picture. So it's never escalate because you can usually tell, not always. Yeah. But I feel like in my experience, the times I've matched with the catfish, it's just a certain vibe you get where you're like, mm, this isn't a real person, you know? Yeah. But <laughs> if they don't have like more than one photo, big, big no. It, right. You know, for me, there was one person that I matched with and I guess I didn't real, like I usually check photos and stuff and I guess I didn't, I don't know. I might've been drunk or something and I was like, swipe, swipe, swipe. And, yeah. you know, I think there's some definite signs. And, like, we've all grown up. Um, are you – you're in your mid-20s, right? Yeah, 26. Okay. So we grew up watching Catfish in high school yep. and in college. And so I grew up watching that. So, like, I kind of know the signs of that. Like, not wanting to, you know, video chat or, or always, like, trying to meet up and then them always, like, canceling and not being able right. to and, like, not sending pictures. And if they yeah. do, like, it's just, like – weird I don't know when you get that weird feeling is when you like, know it's they're like I don't I don't have any social media it's like really none not, not <laughs> even a Facebook picture. from 2009 I'd take that yeah and all their pictures are super blurry because it's been screenshotted a million times yes I did I dated before I um came out I dated this guy and he really didn't have any social media but he was kind of a hippie so I feel like maybe you get a maybe they're a hippie like maybe they're a hippie and maybe, you yeah. know, you just need to see if they had a Facebook account from 2009 and, and then that's yeah. good. And then you're like, okay, well, this was just young them, which yeah. obviously like some people, you know, look different or they don't post a photo if they like feel like they've gained a lot of weight and they don't have self-confidence. So like they keep an original photo or maybe mm -hmm. vice versa, which is not a bad thing, I don't think, but it definitely can be misleading too. Yeah. But, um, that stuff isn't as bad, I feel like, cause you're not really lying about anything in in real life you're just not updating on like yeah. what you are currently but <laughs> and I feel like how I go about like if I was to meet someone in real life I feel like I go about that 
a little bit differently now that I'm older versus how I maybe went about it when I was 18, 19. Like now I almost always will get at least get on a phone call with someone before meeting up with them. So I think it'd be hard to catfish me now just because I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to get you on a phone call or video call before I go somewhere to meet you, you know? Nobody's catching yeah. catfishing Haley now, bitches. Yeah. Fucking try her. It's try not going to happen. <laughs> just try. It's not going to, it's not going to happen. Be a detective. <laughs> FaceTime you out of the blue. Seriously. <laughs> I do. I like to do uh, audio messages a lot. Like, um, oh, really? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not going to reveal like my. I'm not. I want to say I have like tactics, but like, there's certain <laughs> things. As a social media marketer, you know, there are certain ways to approach things and certain ways to not approach things. And I figured yep. out the best ways to approach in an authentic way. That's me. I'm not like trying to do a bit or a line or something like that. Mm-hmm. But there are just certain ways to go about being on a dating app and then getting to a phone number and getting to a date. Like there, I've, I've right. found that there's a, a certain way that works for me where yeah. you're building rapport with someone enough to where they can give you their number. And then, you know, from there, like, how can I build more rapport? So it's not just like, you know, almost like a blind first date where you just text and you don't like talk at all. So I don't like that either. Right. I'll send audio messages. Because I, I won't be yeah. like, hey, can I hop on a phone call? I'll just start sending messages. I'll start sending audio messages, and then I'll just see if they message an audio message back. And sometimes yeah, because it's just like, you know, you want to do the same. As, you want to mirror that person, right? Level of right. right. reciprocity. And so, like, if I send an audio message, they send an audio message. And it's great. I can hear their voice. I can You can hear a lot about the person just from their voice. And like, oh, I really like yeah. their voice. Or like, oh, you know, like, they sound witty, or they sound really sweet, or like, you know, like whatever, which, you know, and then you can kind of hear it when they're texting. I love doing that. Like when I'm like talking to somebody that I like and like, I can hear like how they would say it. You can have good chemistry with someone over text, but then sometimes you meet them in person or you get on the phone and you can tell within the first few seconds, you're like, oh, (laughs) this isn't going to work out. Cause like the chemistry over text is going to be different than your chemistry in person. So I think doing the audio messages or phone call or FaceTime is a good way to kind of assess that chemistry before, you know, going out and spending an hour or two with someone Yeah, when you can tell within the first few seconds that, you know, it's just not going to go anywhere. Yeah. It's an investment. You know, you're paying Mm -hmm. money for, you might be paying for the date. You might just be paying for your share or even if you're not paying for it, you're still, you know, had to drive there and you got ready and you, took time to get to know someone out Mm -hmm. of, you know, your busy day and away from friends or family or any other hobbies. So like it does pay to have those, you know, initial things to see if it's worth your time or not, you know, because like everyone's trying to, trying to find love or connection or whatever you're looking for. And, you know, our days are numbered, unfortunately, being a, you never know, (laughs) TikTok creators live forever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll live forever on the we'll live forever on the internet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think I like that. It's very it's a direct approach because I feel like with queer people in general, but specifically like just women queer folks who are looking for other queer folks. You know, I'm gay. I'm looking for a woman who is into women, and then you put all of the other preferences and, and where they're located in the world, and it, you have all these different things, and mm-hmm. you know, you only have with them maybe less than 10% of people that are gay. And then you have like, yeah. you know, however many of those are women, there's a small pool. They got to be single and then you both have to be interested in each other. There's really a lot that has to align. I know. It's remarkable. It, it's remarkable. So many people find love. It's, it's a great thing, but it is. It I don't know how the fuck, I mean, I have been in love, you know, I have obviously it, it didn't work out in the long run, but I know it can happen. But like it, sometimes it is, it is one of those things where it's like, wow, like I I do feel like, I don't feel like it's an insurmountable obstacle. Like I'm not cynical Mm -hmm. about it, but I do feel optimistic, even though the odds are against us, you know, Mm -hmm. that we will find that person. And I don't know why, I don't know why I have that because there's literally so many different things in the way. Yeah. But for some reason, I'm like, it'll work out. It'll work out. It'll be fine. (laughs) Yeah. I was a little skeptical before because I was like oh my gosh the odds are so low but I've also been in love one other time and I feel like once you've had that 
it just confirms that, okay, it is possible. So like, even if it doesn't work out with that one person, you're like, well, if I found it once, you could probably find it again, hopefully at least. <laughs> I feel like glass half full people are like, yeah, right. I can find it again. Glass half empty people are like, that was my one shot. That was the only I one. I it I'm alone forever. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do, man. I feel like the only times I really get down now, because I used to be a super cynical person, but it's like after, like, if I stop dating somebody or after a breakup, like, or I stop talking to somebody, I then I, I will kind of slink into that, like, oh, yeah, I fucking suck, like, and I'll and yeah. I'll get into that, and then I'll have to claw my way out, and then and then I'm good. I think that's like a normal process, though, like immediately after a major breakup, to be a little bit like ah, bitter. You know, yep. I think that's, I think that's normal as yep. long as you eventually come out of it. True. You know. All right, guys, we're going with the question with the queer segment. Um, part of the podcast, we're trying to answer your questions on life, love, happiness that uh, we have no business trying to answer. If you'd like to submit a question that could be chosen for this podcast, send it to questions at queertalkpodcast.com or send me a DM at Brie Logan on Instagram to be featured. Um, email is also in the description below. You can put your name, age, wherever you're at in the world. And if you want to stay anonymous, let me know when you submit. I'll keep your identity private. Um, this question comes from Maria. She is 20 years old. She's from New Mexico. She didn't have any pronouns. So sorry if you're not she, her, if I say they, them. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, but they ask, how long did it take you to become comfortable in your own skin when you came out? I've really had a hard time with my confidence ever since coming out, not that I had a bad coming out by any means, but I'm not the same person that I was, but I don't really know what I am now or how I fit in the world anymore. Any advice on becoming more confident and self-assured as a queer woman? Thank you guys. Yeah, after I came out, I would say for a couple years, I still held some of that internalized homophobia as well as just feeling a little bit not super confident with being lesbian. Like I even initially, when I first came out, I came out as bi, not because I felt like I was. It was just like I was confused as to how to, I think I was scared to step into lesbian role for some reason coming out as bi made me more comfortable at that time. But yeah, I would say it took me a couple years to fully own who I was and to start becoming comfortable with my identity and I would say just be patient with yourself and give yourself time. It is a bit jarring sometimes when you first come out, especially because you don't know how the world is going to perceive you because you were presenting yourself in one way and now you're presenting yourself a different way and that can lead to some insecurities. So just give it some time. Eventually that will become comfortable and become normal for you to identify as whatever you want to identify as. Yeah, I completely agree with that, um, Maria. It is really difficult. When, even if you didn't have like a really bad coming out, or, and even if you had a really great coming out and you had really progressive parents and kind of like a quintessential thing, it can be hard because we have these ideas about ourselves. And once we realize that they aren't those ideas, it's almost like a period of grief of like the person that you once were, you know? But I will say the person that you once were, it wasn't the most authentic version of yourself. It was a version of yourself that was trying to fit into society's norms. And you were trying to kind of be that person in, in different facets of your life. So slowly picking away at that to find out who you are truly is going to take a little bit. It's going to take a little bit of, of figuring out, you know, where you are in the world. And the, the best thing that I would say for that is to just really hone in on like I I got really I don't want to say obsessed but like I started watching documentaries I really started educating myself on gender and and different things not just different you know labels when it comes to sexuality but like how I want to present and 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 different things you know like I like growing my armpit hair out like all of these different things that I was challenging the norms of how I was presenting and the types of hobbies that I liked and in the, you know, the different ways in which like I dated men because 
I wanted to be them, not because I liked them and embodying that type of style, masculinity and femininity and how I wanted to represent that in my true personality and how I express myself and, and all of those things. And it's a big process. I did a lot of journaling. I still do, but I did a lot when I first came out. So I just had so many thoughts and issues and like everything was just it was like Pandora's box was opening up mm -hmm. and I really needed to write everything down and really process, process, process all of my feelings. Going to therapy really helped too. I definitely went to therapy when I started going, coming out because I was really confused and I wasn't that confident either. I, you know, wasn't confident in, in all facets because I really, you know, I was just like you, I didn't know who I was and it took me a while to figure out that person. And it's kind of funny because once I kind of started realizing it, like, I was the person that I was when I was a tomboy when I was a kid before society kind of came all in and, and kind of fucked it up. <laughs> um, I was the kid that climbed trees and played with my older boy cousins and I never wore a shirt and my hair was always tangled and I looked like fucking Tarzan and as a baby or like Mowgli as a baby, <laughs> Mowgli, little, little Mowgli. And I kind of resorted back to that, which I love. And it's kind of funny how that happens, you know, because when you're, you know, four, five, and six, you you kind of are your authentic self. You haven't really been taught, you know, how to lie and how to save face and how to fit in. And, and you really are more authentic. And, you know, so that's what I would say. Kind of think back to when you were a kid and, you know, before mm -hmm. that all happened and what you were like. And it'll come along. It really will. I think just yeah. have some faith in it. it. It takes a little bit. I've been out three years and... I had waves of, of that kind of confidence and, and that kind of thing. Like it took a while. I was in a relationship for a year and a half of, of me coming out. And then I had a huge glow up after I came out. And then TikTok was a huge thing for me too. Just realizing what other queer women were doing and wearing and in and, and so many different voices and opinions. So I kind of had a, a resurgence, little little glow up from that. But yeah, the confidence, it may take a little bit, but you know, I would say pour into queer literature and pour into movies and people who are advocates on social media, you know, not just influencers, but people who really have something to say, people who are who are out here for the community. You know, figure it out. I would agree with that and like try to find communities online that are LGBT, maybe other LGBT friends would be super benefit. Like I know that helped me a lot because one thing when you first come out, you may or may not know a lot of other people in the community and that can feel very isolating. You kind of just feel off like mm -hmm. all by yourself. Like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of like that weirdo. Like I can't relate to anyone or, or anything like that. But if you start surrounding yourself, like you said, with that culture and with other members of the community, you'll start to see that you're not alone. Like you can relate to other people and their stories and they'll accept you for exactly who you are. So yeah, I would agree with you. Just surround yourself as much as possible with that world. So Maria, I hope that answers your question. Listeners, I hope that you got a lot out of that question. As for now, uh, Haley, do you want to answer some questions really fast in our lightning round? Let's do it. Perfect. Okay, you ready? Ready. What type of milk do you prefer in your cereal? 2%. 2%? Two percent. You're not gonna do oat milk. You're not even gonna do fucking cashew milk. Maybe a nice almond. Yeah. Maybe a nice almond. Yeah. Nice. Climb a mountain or jump from a plane? Both. Hell yeah. Maybe I'll jump from a mountain. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Um, would you rather lose all your hair or gain double the hair you have now? I guess gain gain double. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about losing all. Like you have no eyebrows either. Like. <laughs> I feel like if you gain double the hair, then you just have to really do a lot of shaving and things like that, but you still have it. Whereas if you have no hair, you can't grow it. But if you have too much hair, you can always like get rid of it. Oh, that's true. Is it double hair everywhere? Like when my eyebrows go out to here? Like yeah, you would just have to like really shave, you know? Oh man. You really wax and all that. It would be a lot of upkeep. But you that's true. be able to, you know, maintain. Are you the gay that kills the spiders? Yeah. There I'll stop go. them. All right. Hawaiian shirts or flannels? Flannels. Birkenstocks or Vans? I don't own either. Converse. Oh, Converse. I love Converse. a Converse girl. Yep. I'm a Converse girl. Awesome. Invisibility or super strength? Invisibility. 
Are you a night owl or are you a morning person? Goes back and forth, but currently a night owl. Okay, I am too. Yep. Ariel or Jasmine? Ariel. Big spoon or little spoon? Both. <laughs> switch. Um, switch. <laughs> I was about to say that. I'm like, I'm your typical switch. I'm, I'm both. <laughs> I love answering that question. I lo- or I love yeah. asking that question. And then last question, what's your favorite queer movie? I don't know if I have a favorite queer movie, but I do like the L word. The okay. Show. You like yeah. the old L word or the new? I feel like you had a video on this. Old L word or old, new L word? Old. You don't like the new one? What, why don't you like no. the new one? Well, I've only seen a few episodes of the new and I just couldn't quite get into it. I feel like I'm just too attached to the old one. Me too. So seeing the new styling, it's just like mm. there I'm sure it'd be fine. Characters on it though, with with old with new storylines, yeah, which was nice. That's true. Not the whole yeah. cast, but a good portion. So that's not. I just feel like the actors with the new generation aren't that good. Yeah. I don't know. I really like Finley, the actress that Finley's in. She's also in Easy. I don't know. I just really like that actress. She's good. Most of the time, I just watch things just because they're gay, which kind of sucks. Yeah. You know, I wish there was better queer movies, but no one wants right. to do them. Yeah, you definitely um, need more. I think so, too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Haley, for being on this episode. If you guys want to check out more about Haley, you can find her at Haley Faulkner on TikTok and Instagram. And you can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan. If you guys like this episode and are new, please subscribe um, to Apple Podcasts. And give us a follow on Spotify. That's it. This episode, my queers, be you, be queer, stay safe, and we will see you on the next episode.